Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the One Million Show. Unfortunately, One Show legends Alex Jones and Matt Baker were unavailable this evening. We also checked the availability of Anton Deck, Phil and Holly, and we even went to the Crankies. But unfortunately, no one had any availability. Therefore, to guide you through this evening's event, you have myself, Stephen Hamill, COO of Scottish Edge, and me, Evelyn MacDonald, CEO of Scottish Edge, and we're coming to you live from Metro Production Group in Edinburgh. Tonight's special edition of the One Million Show is a culmination of the record-breaking Scottish Edge Round 16 final, and we'll see the winners being announced across the various competition categories. It's pretty surreal standing here knowing that over the next hour and a half, we're going to be handing out in excess of one million pounds to Scotland's up and coming high growth potential entrepreneurial talent. The prize money will be split across 33 businesses who've stood out in the competition with their business growth propositions. And we're also thrilled tonight to be presenting the first STV Growth Edge Award. Scottish Edge Round 16 has been a bit different. Under normal circumstances, we'd be standing live in front of an audience of 300, announcing our category winners and sharing highlights from the live pitching days, which many of you sitting at home would have attended. However, whilst myself and Stephen are here, socially distanced and talking to a camera only, this definitely doesn't detract from just how amazing round 16 of the Edge competition has been. And over the course of this evening, I hope you'll be blown away by the award winners, our partner and alumni updates, and not to mention the much anticipated part two of the conversation between Sir Tom Hunter and Professor Sir Christopher Evans, leading bioscience entrepreneur. There's no denying that everyone watching tonight will have in some way have been impacted by COVID-19. In fact, some of the most common words and phrases now used by people are unprecedented, different, uncertainty, new normal, and everyone's favourite new toy, Zoom. However, we plan, plan to change that this evening with a different focus. I'm trying to think about the key themes for tonight. I initially come up with pride, inspiration, support, and hope. Uh, hang on a minute, Stephen, is that not P, I, S, and did you say hope? I did, yeah. So that maybe doesn't give the best uh, positive message for those who love an acronym out there. So let's keep things a bit more professional. Let's have the themes focused on hope, inspiration, the future, and most of all, pride. Everyone tuning in here this evening will have in some way some connection with early stage business community in Scotland. And these are the businesses that are going to be the heart and soul of the economic recovery in Scotland. And for that, every one of us should feel a sense of pride. To further put that sense of pride and hope into context, we are delighted to hand over to someone who's played a vital role in the continued success of Scottish Edge. Alongside the Royal Bank of Scotland, Scottish Government and Scottish Enterprise, Sir Tom Hunter through the Hunter Foundation has been instrumental in helping build a platform to enable Scottish Edge to exist and play a pivotal role in supporting Scotland's thriving early stage business community. Over to you, Sir Tom. Well, hello, and thanks very much, um, Evelyn and Stephen. It's been a pretty strange year, I'm sure all of you will agree. But when we sat round our Zoom call as the Edge Board to decide what we were going to do at the beginning of the year, we all decided that it was more important than ever that we carry on with the Edge and we carry on supporting Scotland's start-up and scale-up community. So why is it so important? Why do we care so passionately about it? It's as simple as this. In times of great change, and these are times of great change, it will be entrepreneurs who see us out of this crisis we're in. Because you guys are the ones 
who can see the change coming, you can adapt to it quickest, you can see the opportunity, seize on it, create the jobs and make our economy great again. And being an entrepreneur is a lonely time when you first start. We all understand that and therefore Scottish Edge was always about more than just the money. Of course the money is important but the peer-to-peer -peer support, the peer-to-peer -peer learning, the mentorship, all of these things are vital if you are going to grow your business and create the jobs Scotland needs so much. So, there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur in Scotland. The support mechanism, and thank you to Fiona Hislop, Scottish Enterprise, for getting us more money to support you guys at our time of need. And thank you to all our judges who have helped us get on with this in difficult times. But most of all, but most of all, thank you to you for keeping going in your business, for not getting down, for helping others with their businesses. That's what Scotland is all about. The helping of each other to create a better solution. And we will create a better solution. And Scottish Edge is behind you 100%. So good luck, have a great night, and take care of each other. All the very best. Some inspiring words there from Sir Tom Hunter. And as always, we are hugely grateful to the Hunter Foundation for their fantastic support of Scottish Edge. So following a delay in the delivery of Scottish Edge Round 16 due to COVID-19, we managed to get things back on track in July when the round was relaunched and that led to a record-breaking number of applications being received. The 327 applications brought the usual, usual array of highly innovative offerings ranging from Fitbit for cows, a cartoon featuring a Polish bear, the mining of space asteroids, scents to help you pass exams and much, much more. Many of you will have tuned into the main pitching day finals which took place just last week. And what a brilliant two day final we had. Thanks to the tech expertise of the fantastic team here at Metro, we were able to allow people to tune in from the comfort of their own home and watch 23 amazing businesses pitch to our panel of judges. There were over 2000 views across the two days of the final. And here's a great chance to review what happened. Stephen, have you any idea where Matthew is? No. Is he not at studio? I tell you what, I'll just give him a call. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. What now? Really? Where? Well, luckily, I'm always ready. Morning, everybody, uh, and welcome to the uh, Edge 16 finals. Involving coupling washing and day protection solvents in F mock or B mock amino acids. Well done, Sarah. Good pitch. Now, this is the exact DeLorean that was used in our opening video. Uh, and as you can see, it's a tiny model DeLorean. Um, it's, it's obviously far too small for me. It's just about the right size for Jack Proctor from Scottish Edge. Uh, we'll try it this morning, he can get into it. But we're gonna give this away. Right, to, to today's uh, to be joined by Marta Krupinska uh, from Google for Startups, but a serial entrepreneur. 
it's never been easier to build a company. And I think this is when true democratization comes in because you don't need to have, you know, daddy doesn't need to have given you a million pounds and you haven't had to do it seven times before to be able to prove your concept and show to potential investors or to the world that you're onto something. Your product enables the, I guess, the, the skin to, to to be viable for, is it 10 days or so? I, I, I told you, I told you I'd get rid of the skin, okay? It's absolutely fine, don't worry, yeah, it's completely... Uh, hi, and uh, welcome back. So whilst you're sitting there, raise your arms up in a boxing pose and push. But I'm not doing this. Are you reading this on the auto cue? I can't believe it. I'm not a performing monkey. It says it, right? I'm not joking. Squeeze your buttock while sitting down. Professor Sir Christopher Evans, OBE. But, but if you're going to step outside that science box into the financial commercial world, you're going to need those other values of resourcefulness, creativity, toughness, etc. No one had created, Tom, a startup by your company. So I was Mr. Startup. Uh, to the finalists, who are, of course, the people who this is all about, you have done enough now. Uh, you have done all you can. The judges are impressed with everybody. They've got a really, really difficult decision to make. You have done a fantastic job. Everyone is very proud of you and thank you for being part of it. What a brilliant video. And that brings back some brilliant and funny memories from an event that was just uh, last week. Uh, and I think it was perfectly summed up there by Matthew who, who captured the essence of the final really well. Enhance the uh, sense of pride and hope that we really want to, to bring through from tonight's event. And there's no doubt and there's some amazing early stage businesses operating through the length and breadth of Scotland. Just want to say a, a well done to Jack Proctor and our team who pulled that sort of recap video together. Uh, I thought he'd done a great job and really captured what the finals days were all about. And I know from myself and Evelyn, we're really looking forward to our journey home uh, by Jack and his DeLorean this evening after tonight's event. So. That'll be something different for us. Moving on, and next up, it's time to hear from Fiona Hislop, MSP and Cabinet Secretary for Economy, Fair Work and Culture. Scottish Government's support for Scottish Edge over the years has been invaluable. And we owe a great deal of gratitude for that continued support, which plays a huge part in enabling us to stand here this evening and be able to award £1 million in prize money. I can only imagine that being responsible for Scotland's economy during a pandemic will result in having a pretty busy diary. So we're delighted that Ms Hislop found some time to offer some words of that it's been, what it's been like to be at the, the front line facing of COVID-19 and how important early stage businesses are to the future recovery of Scotland. Let's now hear from Ms Hislop. Thank you, Evelyn and colleagues, for the opportunity to say a few words at the start of these Round 16 Awards. Uh, to be sure, I'd rather join you in person than in virtual form like this, but such are the unusual circumstances to which we are all having to adapt. So the ability to change and adapt is, I'd suggest, a notable feature of the Scottish Edge. Previously, I did have the pleasure to attend the EDGE Awards in person. I recall that the Creative EDGE was being launched on that particular night, 
something as the Minister for Culture I, I was especially pleased to see, and which I understand has gone on to be a great success. But this is just one of many ways in which the programme has adapted in recent years to the needs of Scotland's emerging entrepreneurs, as well as Creative Edge. The competition has introduced other bespoke categories uh, and awards such as Young Edge, Wildcard Edge, Higgs Edge, Social Edge and Circular Economy Edge, all of which have helped to broaden the reach and increase the profile of the competition. And now, of course, for round 16, we also have the STV Growth Award, which offers £75,000 worth of airtime and a launch commercial to the very fortunate recipient. That's in addition to any monetary award, which that business may also achieve on the night. I dare say uh, this is a very welcome addition to the sizable stable of support which Scottish Edge now oversees, and something for which both Edge and SCV are very much to be commended. And it's no secret that Scotland's economy obviously has taken a severe hit from the COVID-19 emergency, despite our best efforts to dampen the impact through a business support package totalling £2.3 billion. So now more than ever, we need the businesses of tomorrow to lay the foundations on which our future prosperity will rest. Of course, I know what a challenge a crisis like this can be for new businesses in particular, how delicate a, a time it can be starting a new business, even in the best of economic weather. So I was extremely heartened to hear of the record number of applications to this latest round of the programme. It shows that our nation's entrepreneurial sp spirit has not at all been dampened by the trials of this past year. If anything, it has been reignited which offers hope uh, to us all in terms of Scotland's long-term economic recovery and resilience and shows that the ability to adapt runs deep in our culture. For our part, the Scottish Government is proud to be continuing our support for the grant uh, funding of this competition, as well as uh, to approve a 50-50 grant loan mix for this round in particular. I do believe that by boosting the support available to our most promising new businesses, we are helping to support all our futures. Indeed, we look to our entrepreneurs to lead the way in our economic recovery. You'll know that we have recently published an implementation plan highlighting some of the key opportunities for rebuilding our economy. But I know very well that it's the can-do spirit that will help us to find and seize these, those opportunities. As a government, we're committed uh, to supporting you along the way as best we can, and we are listening in terms of how we can make the best use of your talents, skills and energy. One of the ways in which we can do that is through our participation in the CanDo ecosystem, of which the Scottish Edge is such an important part. The CanDo movement is founded on the ethos of collaboration across diverse partners, uh, be they from the public, private or third sectors. It is an approach that helps us as a nation to be greater than the sum of our parts. And that is something that has never been more relevant than now. Meanwhile, we're also looking to see how we can strategically support particular sectors to fulfil their potential. Scotland already has a strong reputation in terms of tech entrepreneurship. And the recent Logan report by Mark Hogan of Skyscanner fame sets out a roadmap for how we can become a true world leader in that field. So I'm sure that many of you will have already read that report. And if you have, you may agree that it's quite a visionary and ambitious piece of work, as you might expect from someone such as Mark Hogan. For our part, we have endorsed his recommendations, which include creating a national network of hubs of tech startups and a greater emphasis on practical entrepreneurial education. The hard part, of course, lies in putting those recommendations into action. So we look eagerly towards our can-do partners and entrepreneurs like yourselves to help us along the way. In closing, I want to thank once again uh, all of you for having me uh, address you just now, and I, I would encourage you all to consider what part you can play in the bigger picture of Scotland's economic recovery. Success as individuals is marvellous, as businesses even better. But of course, what I really want to see is us moving 
forward as a nation out of the present difficulties and into a brighter uh, future. For now, although I realise it's about celebration and heaven's over, I think we all need that uh, after the last uh, few months uh, of trial. So I wish you all a very pleasant evening and of course, warmest congratulations to all of you, whether you walk away with a prize tonight or not, because I know that just being part of the edge is a marvellous reward in itself. Thank you once again and good evening. Thank you so much, Cabinet Secretary, and great to see the focus on a brighter future, as well as confirming the important part the early stage business community play in Scotland's economy and in Scotland's future. It's now time to get the ball rolling with the main aspect of the awards ceremony, announcing our award winners. You ready to go, Stephen? Yep, I'm ready for it. Over the course of tonight, we will be announcing and recognising the achievements of 33 businesses who've stood out in the hugely competitive round 16 of the EDGE competition and awarding over £1 million. It's so rewarding to be part of a team that delivers such an exciting business competition. And when we always get together at the end and discuss the highlights as, as a team, one of the things that really stands out for us is the initial reaction you get when you announce someone as a winner. And you get that moment of anticipation as they wait to find out how much they've won. So as you can imagine, without the, the finalists here in the room tonight, that's been a bit more challenging. But we decided to try and give it a go. And as we go through the winner announcements this evening, you'll see lots of reactions, cheers, shock, stunned silence, and a few tears along the way. All of our 33 businesses know that they've been selected as a winner for this round, but to maintain an element of suspense, no one yet knows how much they've won, and they will find out over the course of the next hour or so. So it's over to Stephen to get things going with our first award announcements of the night, and we're kicking things off with the Young Edge category. Thanks, Evelyn. The Young Edge final was held two weeks back, and in the words of the judges for the Young Edge category, the final was nothing short of exceptional. We had set the judges the task of selecting seven winners from the ten finals who pitched across the Young Edge final day. But following such an amazing day, where all ten could easily have been supported, the judges couldn't whittle it down, and we ended up with eight winners. So here goes with the first awards of this evening. Our first winner of the night is Pomelo Collective Trading as Wreath. They have developed software that is aimed at tackling single-use packaging. The judges thought their product was hugely topical and offers an extremely strong circular economy-focused solution. A huge well done goes to Claire Rampin and Emily Rogers of Reef, who have won a Young Edge Award of £10,000. Well done, Claire and Emily. Next up, Imagine there was a robot that could navigate its way through huge silos of grain and provide readings on the quality of that grain. Well, that's exactly what our next, next winner has developed. I'm delighted to announce that Lorenzo Conti and the team at Crover have been awarded a Young Edge Award of £10,000. Our next winner provided us with one of the best descriptions of his business, which is the solution to slabbers. And for any non-Glaswegians watching, slebers is the moisture and, and saliva that comes out your mouth. Robbie McIsaac of McIsaac Limited has developed the Flux Blowpipe, which is a revolutionary moisture control for bagpipers. Following up on a previous Wildcard Edge Award, Robbie has now added to that with a £10,000 Young Edge Award. Well done to Robbie. The assessment panel described the next winner as a business with a really strong future growth potential. Already established as a household name for residential architecture, Hoco Design now add to their recent success at the Great British Entrepreneur Awards with a Young Edge winner's title. Congratulations to Danny Campbell and the Hoco Design team who have secured £10,000 from Young Edge. Our next winner is Bare Bones Chocolate who already have their premium chocolate bars stocked in Selfridges. And the product was des described by the assessment panel as truly delicious with great branding. 
Give a warm virtual round of applause to Lara Messer and Cameron Dixon of Bare Bones Chocolate, who have won a Young Edge Award of £10,000. A strong social focus is the core value of our next Young Edge winner. Through selling Rwandan coffee, Benjamin Morenzi of Rafiki Coffee helps send young children in Rwanda to school, in which is a hugely admirable thing to do. It's very humbling to be able to award Benjamin a Young Edge Award tonight of £10,000. Well done, Benjamin. Our next winner is an Aberdeen-based business who without doubt offered myself and Evelyn our personal highlight of the current round. If you just give me a wee second, I can show you something. Who wouldn't want to have a knitted portrait of themselves? I think it's one of the, the sort of most proud moments in my life. <laughs> So that's me. I feel as though I've made it now. So thank you for that. Knit It, who is a digital platform, is aiming to revolutionise the knitting industry. And a huge well done goes to Lucy Fisher, who has won a Young Edge Award of £10,000, as well as winning the title of Creative Edge winner for round 16. Well done, Lucy, and thank you for the, the, the brilliant portraits. We said at the outset that one of the things that is most memorable about a Scottish Edge Awards night or competition is the elation you see from the winners when they are told the good news. And here's the moment the Young Edge winners found out about their success in round 16. <laughs> We just we, we wanted to get you together first of all to say that it was just an unbelievably high standard yesterday the judges had actually emailed us beforehand and said this is going to be incredibly difficult we, we don't know how we're going to decide between this group of businesses they're absolutely amazing and if that's representative of young entrepreneurs in scotland then you know we've, we've not got much to worry about so so that was such a so, you know, those messages of support that we got before we even started was, was great. And then you all came on and just blew us away. It was just such a great day. So just wanted to give you some news, but I'm going to hand over to Stephen now. So I think, just following on from what Evelyn said there, I think the award the judges you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Evelyn, was exceptional. I think that was yeah. the, the way they described the, the day yesterday. It was exceptional and everyone they said was played a part in that. It was brilliant. But... It's fallen on me to, to pass on the good news to everyone on the call. You have all been picked as winners, and we're delighted to say you're our round 16 winners of Young Age. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So well done. Uh, really pleased for you. Again, well done to all the, the Young Age winners so far, and, and great to see those reactions. There's still one more Young Edge Award to announce, and that's for our top prize winner. The top prize in this category is sponsored by our legal partners, Harper McLeod, and it carries a, a, a prize of £15,000, as well as a guaranteed place in a semi-final of a future round of Scottish Edge. So for round 16, the Harper McLeod Young Edge Award goes to Bio Liberty, who have designed a novel robotic glove aimed at sufferers of hand weakness. Huge congratulations goes to Rowan, Ross and she, and here's what happened when they found out the really good news. Hey, hi Rowan, as, as Stephen said, I'm Paula Skinner, I'm from Harper McLeod, and as Stephen said, one of our main roles is to offer legal support to Scottish Edge, so Scottish Edge and, and work with some of the businesses there. Um, but another key role that we pay for Scottish Edge is we sponsor the top prize um, for, for, for Young Edge. Oh, and wow. that leads us on to the main reason for the call today. So just like to say congratulations, you are the winner of the Harper McLeod Young Edge Award, the top <laughs> prize of the day. Um, so you've won £15,000 and the chance to go through to the, the uh, straight through to the semi-final. So wow. congratulations, well oh, deserved. Thank yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> um, no, the judges were delighted with your, they thought your pitch was, was fantastic from Harper McLeod perspective. Yeah. Donnie Monroe, who was on the panel, was really impressed with the team around you. 
and also um, in terms of the um, the IP protection that you already had and that you'd already covered off a lot of the risks. So yep. congratulations, yeah, you're you. the winner of the Young Edge Awards. <laughs> well, the smile's not going to stop any time. <laughs> Thanks once again to the fantastic team at Harper MacLeod for all their support of Scottish Edge. I think you'll agree that that group of young entrepreneurs is incredibly inspiring. And as the famous slogan goes, the future's bright, the future's young edge. So from young aspiring entrepreneurs, it's now time to hear from one of our past Scottish Edge category winners. Debbie Wake of My Way Digital Health won £80,000 way back in round 10 of the competition. Three years on, the business is thriving and is seen as the tech solution for the management of diabetes for both patients and clinicians alike. Here's Debbie to tell us more. My name is Debbie Wake. I'm CEO and co-founder and clinical lead of My Way Digital Health. My Way Digital Health is a University of Dundee spin-out that delivers digital health solutions to support clinicians and people with diabetes. It connects data across the healthcare IT system and from home recorded devices, and it delivers personalised advice and links users to educational resources and support. Our award-winning My Diabetes My Way platform was being used nationally in Scotland since 2008 with over 60,000 registrants under a non-commercial arrangement. Through My Way Digital Health, which was spun out in 2017, My Diabetes My Way is now being delivered in around a quarter of England with pipeline and demonstrator projects in place in the US, India, and the Middle East, where one in four people suffer from diabetes. Our vision is to deliver affordable, data-driven solutions globally to improve outcomes and reduce the costs associated with the diabetes epidemic. When we won Scottish Edge in 2018, there were only four of us on the team, and I think only two of us were actually getting paid. But now we've got around 26 employees, that's about 17 full-time equivalents, and we've got four more full-time posts currently being recruited. In terms of turnover, I can't remember exactly what we predicted when we put in our Scottish Edge application, probably way too ambitious, but we're now looking at about a one and a half million contracted annual revenue with about a million recurrent funding, and we're predicting a big inflection next year. We've grown organically, we've not had to take any external investment, so we're pretty pleased with our numbers. That's three years since incorporation. We've also received around two and a half million in project funding from Innovate UK through various schemes. We're a B2B business, so our main customers to date have been large NHS organisations like the health authorities covering the northwest coast of England, Greater Manchester, Somerset and North East and North West London. Through commissioning our platform, it's now been made available free of charge to over a million people in the UK with diabetes, helping them to better self-manage their condition. In addition, during COVID, we quickly developed and deployed a platform to support everyone in NHS England with type 1 diabetes. Our next key goal is around international expansion, proving the business model can work outside the UK and establishing our infrastructure and support contracting in multiple territories. Our experience of Scottish Edge was that it was more than just the money. It continues to be a source of peer support, a fundamental part of our entrepreneurial network in Scotland. It's helped deliver educational events with eminent speakers. And for me, I was able to turn the tables and actually help with the judging last year, which was also a really insightful and great learning experience. So my advice for any early stage businesses out there is to take advantage of all the support that the Scottish entrepreneurial ecosystem can offer. We're really lucky to have so many great competitions, schemes, accelerators and community. Other advice is to be bold, but not foolish. Always to be open to advice and to consider it carefully, but don't let it dampen your ambition. To think big from the start, and to take a disciplined approach to developing your business. Read and learn about disciplined entrepreneurship 
and be willing to start again if your business model isn't working. As they say, fail fast, but keep moving forward. In terms of my personal ask, well, we're always looking for great, passionate people to join our team, particularly people with experience in international healthcare. So if you're interested in joining us on this journey, then please get in touch. Fantastic story there by Debbie. And it's great to see the Edged Award in uh, round 10 played a big part in, in making my way the success it is today. It was also great to see uh, Debbie back up the, the message from Sir, from Sir Tom earlier in the, the event when he talked about Edge being more than just about the money. So Debbie was a, a great example of that. Moving on, I'm sure we'll be spoilt for choice when it comes to case studies from round 16 for using at future award ceremonies. And it's now time to hear for who the future success stories could be as we announce the first batch of winners from the Scottish Edge category. All the winners have been on tenterhooks for the past week, waiting to find out how much they have been awarded. So I'll now hand over to Evelyn to take you through the first six winners. Great, thanks Stephen. Here goes. Delighted to say our first Scottish Edge category winner of this evening have created an IoT-enabled smart buildings integrator that will disrupt the traditional approach of how, how businesses manage facilities management requirements. A huge congratulations to Jonathan Burridge and the team at Utopia who have secured, secured a Scottish Edge award of £30,000. Well done, Jonathan. We've all seen and probably enjoyed the revolution in the gin market. But the word on the street is that the next drink to really take off is rum. And that's great news for our next winners. Husband and wife team Paul and Jacine have created an award-winning range of Scottish spirits under the Matuga Rum and Live Rum brands. Well done to Matuga distillers who've won an award of £25,000. Congratulations. Next up, we go to a place very familiar to the age process, that is space. Our next winners remove the complexity of dealing with space satellite data and offer an easy to use offering for utilising space data for the benefit of many sectors. Genevieve and the team at Quocient, trading as Earthblocks, have secured a Scottish Edge award of £30,000. Well done, Genevieve. It's always great for the team to see a past finalist take the not yet result and then come back with an enhanced business plan. Pillow Property Partners is a travel tech platform that matches holiday homeowners with guests and builds a real social purpose into the offering. I'm delighted to welcome Scott Weir and all the team at Pillow to the Scottish Edge Winners Club and well done on winning an award of £25,000. So we've gone from space to travel platforms and therefore it only feels right to go back to space again. This time for emerging AI, quantum space-based technologies and novel cyber security services. Um, and I have to say, Stephen and I had to read this application about three or four times. A huge congratulations to Craft Prospect, who've won a Scottish Edge Award of £80,000. It's now time for a little montage capturing the moments when we let the businesses know that they'd won. Uh, but I have some good news for you. The judges were very well impressed and you've, sec you've secured a Scottish Edge Award in round 16. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, that's great. Congratulations. I'm delighted to, I'm d delighted to tell you that you've been chosen as, as, as one of the winners. Oh, amazing. Paul was meant to join, but he's busy at the distillery, so um, he's probably, he's making rum every day, all day, so. Excellent. Well, <laughs> congratulations. That's fabulous. So, um, uh, delighted to tell you you've been chosen as one of the winners. I was expecting because you said 
you know, in your email, you said brilliantly, I just assume, oh, that's something someone would say to encourage someone that doesn't get the price. <laughs> so great. No, the, no, the judges were very impressed. Uh, well, um, congratulations. Delighted to be able to tell you that the panel have uh, chosen you as an edge winner. You know how much that means, Ken? That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much for your help and support all the way through this. So, um, yes, cool. Um, so, Steve, as you know, it was a really high calibre of candidates this time. However, I'm delighted to say Craft Prospect are one of our Round 16 Edge winners. Congratulations. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can't tell you what this will mean to the team. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thanks, Steve. We also have one more award to announce in this section. That is for our Circular Economy Edge category winner. This is the third time we've delivered the Circular Economy Edge prize, thanks to a huge support from Zero Waste Scotland. The Circular Economy Edge 16 award goes to a purpose-led business who offers sustainable farming practices which use seawater to grow salt-tolerant crops. This innovative way of farming has opportunities to support farmers across the world. Zero Waste Scotland were particularly impressed with the potential for carbon sequestration and land restoration for high-value food production, as well as the potential move into textile production from reeds in the near future. A huge well done to Yannick and the team at Seawater Solutions, who've won an award of £25,000. Yannick, congratulations on being the Circular Economy Edge Award winner for Round 16. How do you feel? Yeah, delighted. Uh, that, that's really great. I uh, really appreciate uh, that that has come through and uh, again, the support from you guys. So it's definitely something to celebrate today and, and take, uh, take, away, take away with us to West Africa in two weeks' time. Fantastic. And I found out recently you're a Dolly Parton fan, so I hope you celebrate by dancing around the room to some Dolly Parton. Yeah, so. nine to nine, I guess. <laughs> so we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Yannick. Thank you. Well done again, Yannick, and what a great bunch of businesses. And for Yannick, not only is he the social enterprise edge winner for this round, he's also one of a select few businesses who are now in possession of a wild card, a young and a Scottish Edge Award. And we'll be back later on to announce more Scottish Edge category winners. Moving on, we're now going to hear from Alison Rose, CEO of the NatWest Group and facilitator of the Rose Review, which focused on the barriers faced by women when looking to start or grow a business. The NatWest Group incorporates core Scottish Edge partner and funder, the Royal Bank of Scotland. And Alison was a Scottish Edge judge back in round five of the competition, where she he helped uh, identify some brilliant businesses to support, such as Sunamp, Beauty Kitchen and Current Health. The Royal Bank of Scotland have been pivotal to the success of Scottish Edge and play a huge part in supporting the whole early stage business community across Scotland. Here's Alison to tell us more. I'm so sorry not to be able to join you for the entire event this evening, but I was keen to say a few words on behalf of the World Bank of Scotland on a night when we recognise so many talented and innovative individuals and businesses. We've had the privilege of supporting Scottish Edge alongside the Hunter Foundation and the Scottish Government since their inception. Thank you to all the businesses and entrepreneurs attending tonight. Your disruptive, innovative and agile approach is the lifeblood of the business environment. And well done to the EDGE team for pulling together the virtual final. Round 16 of the competition was the most successful to date in terms of applications, which is encouraging and indicative of the appetite to start and grow businesses in Scotland. On a personal level, it was also great to see that 60% of the applicants of round 16 have women playing a leading role in the business, as well as a judging panel where more than half of the judges are female. Now more than ever, entrepreneurship is at the heart of our economy. Companies House reported nearly 200,000 new business registrations between March and July during lockdown. 
So it's vital for the sustainable growth of Scotland's economy that we create an environment where entrepreneurs can not only start, scale and succeed, but also to thrive. Our Royal Bank Accelerator Hubs are full of talented people developing a whole range of businesses and it was really important to me that those businesses continue to receive the support that they need during the COVID pandemic. That's why we took action to refocus our accelerator program as a completely digital proposition, which means we have been able to continue to support over a thousand high growth businesses on the program, helping them navigate these uncertain times. The bank's purpose is to champion potential, helping people, families and businesses to thrive. And our partnership with EDGE is an example of our purpose in action. And line with our purpose, we're focusing on three core areas where we believe we can make a real difference. These are addressing the barriers to enterprise and business creation, skill building, particularly around financial confidence, and climate change, supporting the transition to a low carbon economy. Tonight, it is particularly relevant for me to talk about the first of those focus areas, addressing the barriers to enterprise. As we all know, for many, getting started in business remains harder than it should be. And that's why we are focusing our efforts on removing the barriers many people face. In February, we announced new targets to support more aspiring entrepreneurs start up and succeed. Our aim is to help create an additional 50,000 new businesses across the UK by 2023 and encourage over half a million people to consider enterprise as a career choice. Much of this support will be focused on the people and communities who have traditionally faced the highest barriers to entry, with at least 60% being female led and at least 20% being black, Asian or minority ethnic led businesses. A brilliant example of potential being championed and of a thriving business is NAF Stuff, owned by Glasgow-based Tammy Kozlowski. Tammy won £100,000 at the last EDGE final, is a Royal Bank customer and part of our Accelerator programme. And despite all nail salons having to close during lockdown, she relaunched her cuticle oil during the pandemic and made significant sales. She has also launched a hand sanitizer, has more products in development and is building her team. An outstanding example of innovation and agility. As we have with Tammy, I want Royal Bank to help you realise your potential, build your business and see it thrive. We are here to support you and champion your potential, whatever stage you are at. So I would like to finish by congratulating every entrepreneur who was brave enough to pitch Appreciate what you've achieved by getting this far, whether as a finalist or a winner. You should all feel extremely proud. Good luck to you all and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Alison. And we all know how busy you are, so we really appreciate you taking time out um, to tell us about the great work being done to support entrepreneurship by the Royal Bank of Scotland, and in particular, the focused work being delivered by Gordon Merrilees and his wonderful entrepreneurship team here in Scotland. It's been almost five minutes now since we handed out any awards. So Stephen, I think it's time to give away some more prize money, this time in the wildcard age category. The wildcard age category is purely for pre-trading businesses. And what was apparent in this round was that we kind of got the name of the category wrong. Because in round 16, the wildcard edge category should have been called the doing social good category. And you will see why as we go through the list of winners. First up is Ruth Crozy of Silver Line Innovations. Ruth has developed the Easy Over, which is a smart mattress topper with technology that turns people with mobility issues over in bed. Well done to Ruth, who wins a Wildcard Edge Award of £10,000. Next up is an award I could be doing with tonight. It's the Read Smart, which has been created by Howard Moshtail. It's designed to make reading large amounts of text easier. It has specific benefits for the visually impaired, but also has opportunities within sectors like the legal profession. A huge congratulations to Howard, who's won a Wildcard Edge Award of £10,000. Our third Wildcard Edge winner is a team who hail from Plockton in the Highlands of Scotland. Kelp Crofting are aiming to establish a seaweed farm in the local community and then roll these out to other rural local communities across Scotland. 
I'm delighted to announce that Kyla, Alex and Martin of Kelp Crofting have won a Wildcard Edge Award of £10,000. And I know for Kyla that this award has a special meaning. Circular economy is the core focus of our next winners. Hailing from Aberdeenshire and a graduate of the brilliant Grey Matters programme, Recycle 8 are developing a game-changing, low-carbon concrete product utilising previous waste products. Scottish Edge are delighted to support another circular economy-focused business this time with a Wildcard Edge award of £10,000. Our next winner is Dr Faisal Ghani of Solaris Kit, who's developed the world's first flat-packable solar thermal collector, capable of converting sunlight directly into hot water. These products will have huge benefits for many developing regions across the world, with a particular focus on Africa. Please give a huge virtual round of applause to Solaris Kit, who've won £10,000. Only two winners left, and we've still to announce the top prize in this category. Next up, we have a female-led team who've developed a solution to a worldwide problem. Unfortunately, one of the inevitable side effects of having a stoma bag is leakage. And although this can happen at any time to every stoma bag user, it can be debilitating physically as well as mentally. Luckily, Confi Plus have developed a solution that will absorb and contain leakage and give people the confidence when they go out in the world. We're absolutely delighted to be able to support Anne and the team at Confidence Plus in their journey, and it gives me great pleasure to award them £10,000 from Wildcard Age. So that's six winners down with only one more to go. But before we get to our final wildcard winner, let's see the moment that the wildcard edge winners found out they had been selected. Yeah, we wanted to just, just let you know that from the assessor's perspective, obviously it was quite difficult for them because they'd never done it like this before but they just wanted us to pass on the message to you that they thought it was an absolutely brilliant final uh, a fantastic set of businesses you were obviously all really well prepared the Q&A was really interesting and they just felt the standard was incredibly high and obviously we also wanted to reiterate again the fact that you know, you had got to the top 10 out of 180 businesses and obviously when Stephen and I were sitting here there yesterday we were thinking we hope we've picked the right 10 businesses, <laughs> but we absolutely picked the right 10 businesses. So over to Stephen. Stephen, um, I think you've got a wee announcement. Yeah, so Evelyn, you mentioned the top 10 there, so going a wee step further than that, everyone, we're delighted to announce that you've all been selected by our panel as World Card Edge winners for round 16. So. Massive, massive congratulations. So, yeah. <laughs> guys, you've won. Well done. We're absolutely delighted. Some absolutely brilliant reactions there from the winners. So, back to our final Wildcard Edge Award for round 16. Jude Sims and David Powney are a team of physiotherapists and are often challenged with working with patients with spinal cord injuries. Using their vast experience in this area, they've developed wearable leggings aimed at stimulating a combination of muscles to help enable spinal cord injury sufferers to stand and to be able to walk again. The panel at the Wildcard Edge final were hugely impressed with this proposal, and it gives me a great deal of pleasure to announce my go forward as the top prize winner in the Wildcard Edge category. And they win a prize of £15,000, as well as a place in the semi-final of Scottish Edge in a future round of their choice. So here's the moment my fellow presenter, Mr Nice Guy, and I emphasise Mr Nice Guy, told them that they were the top prize winners. <laughs> We've just looked at, we've been going through things and we've found there's a bit of an issue with the £10,000 award. We can't give you the £10,000 award anymore, I'm really sorry. There's a really good reason for it though. Uh, so the reason for that is our judges had to pick a top prize winner. We can't categorize to win 15000 
and I'm absolutely delighted to tell you. Oh, oh fantastic! Oh, <laughs> so, oh, my heart oh, sank there. I was thinking, so <laughs> oh, <my laughs> sorry about the panic. Uh, so, oh, God, that was evil. <laughs> so, a bit of a nasty side to us. So, uh, so we're delighted to see you. Oh, I can't believe that. That's oh, so good. Nice. That's fifteen thousand pounds as a top prize winner in the wild card category. So congratulations. Thank oh, you so thank much. you. That's yeah. brilliant. That's okay. yeah. Right, Stephen, that's you now. Lost your Mr. Nice Guy reputation, but actually, I loved the way um, Jude's face was get getting more and more concerned, and then the joy when they found out. The change in reaction was fantastic. So well done again to Jude and David. We are absolutely delighted to have you as the top prize winner in the wild card age category. And for me, just a, a brilliant bunch of businesses to support through Wildcard Edge and, and just a personal sorry again to Jude and David for, for that. But I do echo Evelyn's comments. We're delighted to have you as uh, an Edge winner. It's now time to hear from one of our, another key partner of Scottish Edge. This time Scottish Enterprise, who have been closely associated with Edge right through its entire ex existence. In fact, the competition was created and initially delivered by Scottish Enterprise. And as it spun out, they've continued to play a, a pivotal role in offering valuable support. In fact, for round 16, a loan has been provided by Scottish Enterprise to Edge to enable some of the winners in this round to get top-up loans to top up their prizes that they're, they're winning this, this round. So here's Victoria Carmichael, Director of Strategic Investment, to offer more insight. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Victoria Carmichael, Director of Strategic Investments in Scottish Enterprise, Scotland's National Economic Development Agency. I hope you're enjoying the evening so far. It would have been fantastic to have been there in person with you all to celebrate. Can we all just take a second and appreciate what an amazing job the EDGE team have done to deliver an amazing round 16, despite all the challenges 2020 has presented. It's been a record year for EDGE with the highest number of applications and a diverse range of applicants from across Scotland. I'd like to congratulate all the finalists. It really takes a tremendous amount of work and courage to put yourself and your business forward in competitions. You've all been wonderful. And to the winners of Edge Round 16, congratulations. What an achievement and amongst such a group of talented entrepreneurs to secure funds to help develop and grow your business. Scottish Enterprise's role is to help businesses create more high quality jobs that brings about a collective wealth and well-being for the people of Scotland. We do this by supporting businesses directly but also through partnerships with organisations like Scottish Edge. With the impact of COVID beginning to be felt across the economy and Brexit approaching, we recognise the need to change and flex our support in this changing economic landscape. So for this year, our strategic priorities will be focused on supporting Scotland's economic recovery. This will include building the resilience of Scotland's companies to protect and create jobs, investing in assets and opportunities of the future that will power a greener, fairer and sustainable recovery. Delivering SE's business transformation service to provide more effective support with an increasing focus on the expertise and advice our people can offer to more businesses for greater impact. Resetting Scotland's approach to inward investment and trade to strengthen our international competitiveness in the post-COVID world. We are hugely supportive of EDGE and its place in supporting the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Scotland is crucial to so many of the early stage businesses and entrepreneurs that are contributing to our economy. Since 2018, we have provided two rounds of funding, totaling 1.5 million, and are very pleased to be continuing the support into round 16, with a further 500,000 of loan funding to help more of Scotland's ambitious entrepreneurs. Our funds allow Scottish Edge to increase the number of awards they're able to provide, but this is only really possible because of the level of high quality applications coming through the competition. This is fantastic for Scotland and is a real pleasure to see this level of ambition coming through in even the difficult times we're all facing. The companies our funds have supported are continuing to grow. In the last two years, they have secured in the region of 3.9 private and public investment. We see many of the companies that win EDGE awards continue to grow and access a range of services from Scottish Enterprise. And it is wonderful to see these companies flourishing. One such company is Centennial Subsea, which is currently being supported by a high growth ventures team, having been established by the Grey Matters programme and winning EDGE funding. 
We're very proud to be involved in its growth journey, along with all the other companies we engage with. We look forward to having the opportunity to support your business in the future. But once again, congratulations to you all and enjoy the night. A big thank you to Victoria at Scottish Enterprise and I'd also like to give a shout out to Jan Robertson and her team at Scottish Enterprise for working with me recently uh, to assist us to secure further lending from Scottish Enterprise to top up the round 16 award winners prizes. So I think now would be a good time to take a little break. We'll give you a chance to top up your champagne glasses and to log on to the Knit It website and work out how to get your faces knitted. So we're going to take a five minute break and we'll see you back here very shortly for the next batch of awards. Thank you. Welcome back everyone. Um, as you've gathered, we've had a few technical issues, so Stephen and I are a bit embarrassed, so you're getting our knitted faces instead. But let's get going again, as we've still got a lot more money to give out. On Scottish Edge Finals Day, it's always apparent how tough a job it is being one of the assessors. For one, you're continually presented with a number of different business cases, which are so varied and cover various sectors and, in and industries, and to add to that, they're always a really high standard. The expertise and dedication offered by the brilliant judges we attract at all stages of the competition is pivotal to what we do at EDGE. And here, to give us an insider's view to being a Scottish EDGE judge at the recent Round 16 final, is one of Scotland's most successful entrepreneurs, Poonam Gupta, OBE of PG Paper. Hello everyone, my name is Poonam Gupta and I'm the CEO and founder of PG Paper Company Limited. I started PG Paper back in 2003 with an important grant of £1,000 from Business Gateway. That money helped me at the time to buy some important equipment that I needed to set up my business. Today, 17 years on, PG Paper has a turnover of around £66 million and is operating in 60 different countries being one of the major players in the paper industry and remains one of the fastest growing paper companies in the UK. I have heard about Scottish Edge over the years from businesses that I mentored, and I've heard how greatly the important funding from Scottish Edge has helped entrepreneurs and inventors set up on their business journey. Recently, I have been honored and privileged to have been invited to Scottish Edge Awards and judge some important entries. I have been absolutely delighted and also inspired seeing the diversity of entries coming in the Scottish Edge companies, which are in e-commerce, life sciences, beauty products, the sheer diversity of the portfolios of entrepreneurs and the way they see what the business will look like today and the business will look like tomorrow is highly inspiring, especially during these times with COVID, when a lot of us have taken a big setback in our businesses and personal lives because of this pandemic that we've been suffering for last few months. This is a tough time and more than ever before, the important funding from Scottish Edge will help some of the businesses set out on their entrepreneurial journey and design their future for tomorrow and perhaps redesign the way business will be done in the future. I also know that there might be some disappointments but hopefully this whole experience of going through Scottish Edge has taught you, the judges comments have helped you learn what you need to know and perhaps re-strategize what you, have, you guys have been thinking about. So you can come back next year if you wish and apply again. Also this whole experience of pitching your business to some of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scotland possibly will help you in the future when you need to go out in the market and pitch your business to investors. So on the whole, this whole hand-holding being done by Scottish Edge, this important funding and investment in your businesses by Scottish Edge will give you a huge advantage in your future. I can once again say that I can only 
talk about my own experience and my experience of judging these awards have been absolutely fantastic. I love the fact that no matter how difficult the situation has been around the world with this COVID-19, the businesses remain focused and are ready to take on the challenges they will pre be presented with tomorrow. So I wish all the entries on all the entrepreneurs good luck. And I hope that you know to, you will find out that you are the winner. But if you aren't, then instead of getting de dejected, think again, redesign, re-strategize and come back stronger. I have no doubt that most of your businesses will go on to make a mark in the business world. And you will remember, just like I do 17 years on, this important help that you got from Scottish Edge to set out on this important journey of yours. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for that great insight, Poonam. And you and your fellow judges at the final did an amazing job and helped us identify a great bunch of businesses to support uh, in round 16. Let's now hear about more of those businesses who were selected by Poonam and our fellow judges as winners as we announce the next batch of, of winners. Our first winners in this block manufacture peptides for use in research as well as for the cosmetic and pharma sectors. Their highly innovative method enables peptide manufacturing to be 150 times cheaper and six times faster than conventional methods. After being a finalist in round 14, it now gives me great pleasure to award Sarah and Gary of Origin Pot Peptides a Scottish Edge Award of £35,000. So well done, guys. You can get a wee cheer, uh, a wee hands in the air cheer from you. That would be great. Well done. Next up, prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers in men in the UK with over 40,000 cases diagnosed each year. Our next winners are a biomedical spin-out from Harriet Watt University who are looking to positively impact on this through their innovative product, the Prostapalp, which is a novel DRE probe for the early detection of prostate cancer. Huge congratulations to Femi Johnson and all the team at IntelliPalp DX who have secured a Scottish Edge Award of £75,000. Well done, Femi. Great news. Well done. Our next winner is another business to hail from the Highlands and Islands region. Marianne Morrison of Boo Boo Skincare has developed a beauty platform as well as her own range of unique skincare masks. It was a special moment when Marianne found out she was a Scottish Edge winner and the tears of joy showed how much this meant to her. Well done to Marianne of Boo Boo Skincare who has been awarded an award of £35,000. Well done. Next up, who knew there was a market out there for recycled skin? Well, our next winner did. A biotech spin out from the University of Dundee, 10 Bio have developed a human skin testing platform that closely mimics intact living skin and will help reduce the need for animal testing in pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries. Well done to Robin and Michael of 10 Bio, who have won an award of £65,000. Well done, guys. Let's now pause there for a little montage capturing the moment those four businesses found out they were a Scottish Edge winner. Excellent, good. Well, I'm pleased to announce that you were successful, you impressed the judges and you have secured a Scottish Edge award in round 16. <laughs> Congratulations. Obviously, the purpose of this conversation is to convey the results and just to let you know how it went. So, the good news is the panel really liked it and they have selected you as a winner for round 16. So, well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, massive congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh, God, my heart's thumping there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oh, that's, that's amazing news. Thank you so much. Uh, but it's, it's nice when you get nice moments uh, like this, which is just to tell you judges were impressed and have picked you as one of our winners. For this. <laughs> so, 
So, I can't breathe. There's <laughs> honestly that's horrible. You were taking so long. <laughs> so, so lighted body. Uh, honestly, you've no, you no idea. That means so much to me. Thank you. So I think. Yes. Well, the good news is you impressed our assessors and they have agreed that 10 Bio should receive a Scottish Edge Award in round 16. Great result. Congratulations. Some brilliant moments here uh, and great to see some of those reactions. We also have a couple of special category awards to announce in this batch. First up, we have a Social Enterprise Edge winner. This award is sponsored by the People's Postcode Lottery through the Postcode Innovation Trust and recognises the top social enterprise in the competition as selected by our judges. The winner of this special category award really impressed the panel at the Social Enterprise Final with her passion to make a difference to young disadvantaged people. Brave, Strong, Beautiful is a social enterprise here in Beauty Salon with a difference. With the difference being that they very much have a social purpose at the core of the business. It's been a few weeks since Kerry Anderson knew that she was the winner of this award, but she's been waiting since then to know the amount. Therefore, I'm pleased to announce that Brave Strong Beautiful has been awarded £50,000 from Social Enterprise Edge. Before we go live to Kerry for some thoughts, let's see the spo special moment when she was told she was the winner of this award. Good. That's good. Well, I'm glad that you, you felt that it went okay because we felt that it went very okay. Oh and so the reason I wanted to have a Zoom call with you was to let you know that you have won Social Enterprise Edge. So oh congratulations. God. Oh my God. So oh you, my God. Well done. You were, you were amazing. You know, the judges just thought you were wonderful. Um, Oh you know, so, so much of it was about, you know, they, they loved your answers to the questions, they loved your passion, they loved what you're trying to do to make a difference. So it was fantastic. Now, obviously, no, thanks, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> thanks so much. Well, oh, no, I really, um, honestly, I did not expect to even get to the finals. So that is that is just amazing. It will just be fantastic to be able to help lots of more young people. Um, Hi, Kerry. Hi there. Thanks for joining us. And no uh, need for tears tonight. Uh, no. no for that. So, oh, just smiles all the way. So, Kerry, can I just ask, is it sunk in yet that you're the winner of this award? And can you tell um, us what difference will this make to you and the people that you, you sort of support through the, the salon? Yeah, so this award is just going to make a massive difference to the young people that work with us. Um, they're coming from disadvantaged backgrounds, so it gives them the opportunity to access more training and gain some more support and inevitably access employment. And so yeah, it's going to make a massive difference to their lives and it means that they can now be more young people with, with the support we've got. Brilliant, Kerry. We're just delighted to, to be able to support you through this. And Thank just you. on behalf of myself, Evelyn, the EDGE team, and, and more so the judges at the Social Enterprise Final, just to say a massive well done, and we're, we're delighted to have you as our Social Enterprise winner. And thanks again to the, the Postcode Lottery for supporting this award. So good luck, and, and just keep doing the great work you're doing with the, the young people through the salon. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So moving on, now for the, the final award in this section. For me, the perfect Scottish Edge journey is to apply, then win maybe Young Edge or Wildcard Edge, grow the business and then come back in a future round and, and win a Scottish Edge award. And that's exactly what Sam Brennan of Fresh Car Care has done. So for anyone out there wanting to get their car cleaned, then make sure you, you download the Fresh Car app. The panel at the final felt this offering provided something of interest to the general public but also provides opportunities to potential franchisees, especially in these uncertain times. Therefore, it gives me huge pleasure to announce the very first winner of the STV Growth Edge Award, Sam Brennan of Fresh Car Care. In addition to his 25,000 Scottish Edge Award, Sam has won 75,000 of advertising time on STV and to have his advert made for him by STV team. Well done to Sam. We're delighted for you and thanks again to Danielle and the brilliant team at STV for introducing this award. 
Sam, very first winner of STV Growth Edge Award. How does that feel? Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. It will mean so much to all the franchises that we've got and all the team. Um, and we're, we're just grateful that you guys do what you put, put the show on and make it happen. So well done. So it's a, a brilliant addition to the competition and we are really delighted to have you the, the first winner. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing how that progresses. So to Sam, well done again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for joining us. That's, that's great. So, and before a Twitter tor storm kicks off and I get accused of any family bias, I can categorically confirm that Sam isn't related to me in any way, uh, does, does, despite the, the resemblance. So, well done again, Sam. Thanks, Stephen. And well done, Sam. I can't wait to see the first STV Growth Edge Award, uh, Award advertisement on TV later this year. So from a young aspiring entrepreneur, it's time to hear from two entrepreneurial superstars. I know this is a part of the event you've been waiting for, as it's time to hear part two of the conversation between Sir Tom Hunter and Professor Sir Christopher Evans. Sir Christopher is one of the UK's leading bioscience entrepreneurs, one of Wales' most successful businessmen, and a man whose invention has saved the lives of countless premature babies. Part one was played last week at our pitching finals, and it's time to sit back and enjoy part two of the conversation. So, so Chris, this is something that I ask every successful entrepreneur and um, there's usually a tipping point and there's usually a time where you've made a big mistake. And I really find now looking back, you know, and I've made some big mistakes, um, but it's how you deal with uh, adversity that makes you stand out, not how you deal with success. Success is easy to deal with. Yeah. But the challenge. So is it a point where you went, oh my goodness, I have mucked that up. And now I need to go fix it. Because I think everybody looks at, at you and thinks, oh, well, it's all success. But there's never, yeah. and every entrepreneur I speak to has yeah. always had big failures as well. Yeah, I mean, there, there are things that go wrong in my world every year, right? I mean, every single year for the last 35 years. So there's <laughs> five examples, Tom, or probably a lot more. But yeah. but but I'm, I'm pretty good. It's like having a bike, right? And you're you know, your tire bursts. If it bursts three times in the same year, I'll keep fixing it and I'll yeah. pump it back up and I'll ride the bike again. What I don't do is throw the bike away because <laughs> the tires burst. You know, it, you, and, and it's a bit like that. I, I remember one example. Uh, I, I can give you this because it's, it's an interesting ending. So we created a company uh, developing a very revolutionary cancer drug based on a virus, right? which would disable the virus, herpes virus, and you got stuff in it. Uh, and eventually, when you inject it into somebody who's got certain tumors, melanomas, it'll, it'll, it'll kill the cancer. So we spent about six years developing this. And by about 2009, we had spent about 25, 30 million. Uh, and we were in clinical trials. Things had gone right and wrong, right and wrong. But we now needed to raise uh, at least $50 million. And guess what? This was Credit Crunch 2009, eight, nine, I ten, remember. Right? You remember it, Tom? But <laughs> for, for this company, the, we could raise nothing in Oxford, London and Oxford. And I mean, we couldn't even raise one million, right? Right. And the whole team can't do anything. We can't pay the team. By the way, we only had about one million left in the bank. So within months, we're dead. We're already trading insolvently. I knew that. It was like, <laughs> it's all over, right? Because that was me thinking, are we going to fold this fabulous company after all these years, you know, and this pioneering drug? Um, lots of discussions. And what we did in the end was sending us, we sent a scouting party to Boston, right. uh, talking to people. The guys there said, what you're doing is clever, but you're not American. You're not based here. So you get nothing. So I said, well, let's go there. And I mean, we moved the headquarters immediately to wow. Boston. The chief exec, the chief financial officer moved their families straight away on the airplanes, kids, 
it was, you know, it was a complete scene of exodus straight. And we went to live in Boston. It then took another 12 months on the bread line in Boston. Like, is this another big mistake, Chris? And we raised that money. Wow, then wow. Put it in the trial. Now, if that trial didn't work, I mean, this is shit or bust, right? <laughs> you're, you're down the pan anyway, because you failed <laughs> in London and you failed in the States, etc. Guess what? That trial worked brilliantly. We saved the lives of a lot of terminal patients. Right. And at the end of the trial, there was a phone call and a large American pharma company offered and said, so Chris, you know, a billion dollars cash for that. <laughs> so the company was sold. And yet, two years wow. before that, it was bankrupt. It was awful. And so you can take your messages from that, Tom. I mean, it, you don't give up, right? You know, I think somebody once said, uh, you know, life is a colorful journey, right? Pain is temporary. A failure is forever, right? And so yeah. don't go there. But the pain, you take it for as many years as it keeps coming, as long as you're believing in what you're doing. And I knew we had something good, but God, we had to find a way, right? Yeah. So that, that, that one was an interesting one because I was at the edge. And I, I've had a few of them. So can I bring you up to date? Because for the guys listening today, I would love to get your take on COVID, the science and the opportunity. Because um, like every entrepreneur, I sit here thinking, okay, it, it is bad. So we've got to sort out what we're doing. But my goodness, there's so much opportunity going to be going to come from this because nobody has been through this before no. and therefore I believe there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur because this agility to think differently to try things to fail to try another thing it's an entrepreneur's time in it my is. opinion but could, could you maybe talk about just a, a little bit about when you think how do you think it's going to play out in terms of vaccines and the science? And then how do you see opportunity here, Chris? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, first of all, um, uh, well, luckily, uh, nearly all the things I said back in, so when this pandemic exploded in March, it was re end of March, it was really April and May in the UK. I did a couple of tele interviews, radio interviews, where you get asked by the BBC or whatever it is, you know, Chris, it's all doom and gloom. We have no drugs, we have no vaccines, we have nothing. And I explained then that there were 50 odd drugs being worked on and there were 50 vaccines in early development. Uh, now, there are 150 different vaccines in development, right? And there are 12 quite mature front runners, like the Oxford one, the Imperial one, the one right. in America, Moderna, the German one, Pfizer one, etc. cetera, Glaxo. So, they are front runners, but more important than the vaccines for me, and I said this back in April, is that if you wait, wait, wait for the vaccines, and that's all you're going to get, you possibly are going to die. And since I said that, 46,000 people did die, and they died not because of the vaccine, because there was no drugs to save them. Drugs are different to vaccine, the, the actual yeah. pharmaceutical. You need something that kills the virus or pushes the virus load inside your system down and you need something that controls the damage the virus has done to your body which is this huge inflammation effect that it causes a cytokine storm and now those drugs were being developed and now we have a series of them remdesivir i think is a very good drug for getting in early if it was dirt cheap i would say anybody who's got symptoms and is struggling a little bit when they get they arrive in hospital they should be injected with remdesivir because i think it'll knock the viral load back then they should go on to one of the steroid hydrocortisone or dexamethasone so you've got these drugs because should they go a bit further with a respirator mask on the inflammation can be controlled and subdued and they stand an excellent chance of coming back out quite quickly from the hospital and then they can wait for the vaccine should they need it but by then they were vaccinated themselves because of the infection, you would have produced right. your own antibody, etc. So I think there's a lot of hope. I, next summer, 
next spring, next summer, I think there'll be uh, several of these vaccines in huge numbers of, of late stage trials and right. would have come out of trials. They would have finished okay. and they'll be injected into hundreds of thousands of humans. So they got, because you're going to know that's a, a good population safety trial. Uh, and I have a feeling if one doesn't work so well, you combine it with another one. Right. No, like MMR, you have two or three vaccines uh, yeah. combined. So I, I'm quite optimistic that throughout 2021, by the end of 2021, there'll be a little package of vaccines which together will work. Now, scaling that to make 8 billion or or dare I say it, 20 billion vials to treat everyone in the world more than once in case you need to give it twice. That's a big, big, huge problem. Bill Gates has, has said, has explained that brilliantly better than yeah. me. So, but at least the, the good, the, the cavalry would have arrived. And now right. you've got to get organized. The good news is there are more drugs coming through. So right. more and more people, should we should not see, should this wave that's happening now, in Britain get worse in October, November, which it probably will, uh -huh. and becomes nasty, I can't see why we should have a lot of deaths. Right. We, we, sh we may have a lot more people going to hospital soon, but they should be coming out quickly. Going in, because we got, the NHS has got lots of PPE, uh, you know, people like me supplied lots of PPE, ventilators, lots of ventilators, they're well organized and they got drugs, they got ammunition. So. I would be more optimistic about being looked after during the, I wouldn't get too worried, scared to death anymore about COVID. And I don't believe, I don't believe we should lock down the whole economy again. Uh, I think the government's doing its best. There may have to be local pockets locked down when there's a breakout, but do it for a short time, then open it up again, you know. Yeah, I mean, you and I have, have talked about the unintended consequences of lockdown is that cancer patients are not being diagnosed nor treated. And I certainly believe that the number of cancer-related deaths is going to be more than the COVID deaths. Way because, more. Because we've shut down. So it's, it's, you know, lockdown is a very blunt instrument to deal with this. Tom, I mean, uh, even as we are talking, you know, today, there, there could be, there'll be about 400 cancer deaths today. Nothing like COVID, right? And, yeah. a, and a thousand, here's the thing, a thousand new people will get, would get cancer today and a thousand new people will tomorrow. And what we used to know is that they get diagnosed. That's how you yeah. know that number. Now we're not diagnosing them because they're not going into hospital to be screened. So there's yeah. a huge backlog of an unknown quantity of undiagnosed cancers and untreated cancers. So the death rate is going to increase next year. Um, it's worrying. So I mean, so the, the big message there for MD listening to us is, is don't, don't say, oh, I don't want to bother the NHS. Go and get it checked out, for goodness sake. Oh, you got to. So, so listen, I want to end on a high because that's, that's a little bit serious there. Um, so everybody's sitting in the audience trying to grow their business, trying to scale their business, trying to make a difference. They're all passionate. So what's, what's your advice? What's your advice? Well, as you said, what a great time to do it, right? Don't be scared off that some people say, oh my God, because of COVID, no one's investing. Well, that's the point. No one's investing. The pileup of cash is enormous. I mean, you know, like when the Hutt Group floated, you know, yesterday, it was like a riot, 30% premium. Everybody <laughs> wants to back something good. So if you've got a good little idea, good little project, good little business plan, good group of people, then, you know, you can raise money. There's a lot of people have been sitting around for eight months with money not able to go and visit people to invest money, right? So there, I think there's a lot of money ready to invest and people are looking for creative, energetic people to, to get on and bring this back. And boy, Boris is going to need all the young entrepreneurs of Britain to rebuild this economy, right? So it's not just that us old boys being smart about what we're doing. You need, you need all these youngsters and these startups. I think it's a great, great time. Uh, you know, as, as I mentioned, you know, 
I lived through the, when I did my first company was in 87, was the great storm. But I went out and raised my money that day of the great storm. The one point odd million British sugar was that day. You lived through the credit crunch, which was a, all biotechs were discounted 90% across the world. Right? And you know what? I didn't stop doing anything. I just kept fighting in the trenches. It was a constant trench war for years. And you come out one at a time with each of the companies still alive. And uh, so the message to all the, the young startups, it doesn't get any worse than that, right? Where no one wants you, all your value's discounted, you're running out of money, and there's no one to give you money because in 2008 and nine, the guys with the money had run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to still stay with it. As I said, pain is temporary and failure is forever. So the message right. is don't give up on your dream. But if you don't share your dream with the customers, your dream may become a nightmare, right? <laughs> Back well, Chris, I think that is a brilliant note to end on. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to you and I've learned a lot today and I've known you for 20 years. Oh, um, brilliant. But good luck to you. I hope you're working on some of these vaccines and how we're going to live with COVID. I am. Um, I think the big message to everybody is this is the time of the entrepreneur. It is. We, we must be bold. We must get on with it. And um, I'm very proud that up in Scotland, we've got Scottish Edge to help. So... Thanks to everybody for listening. Thanks to you, Chris. We'll see you Pleasure. soon. All the very best. Cheers, Dad. Thank you, Tom. Bye, everybody. Amazing insight there into entrepreneurial thinking, but also some inside knowledge from a leading medical expert on COVID-19. So thank you again to Sir Tom and Professor Sir Christopher Evans. It's now time for the final awards of the night and time to take that total above the million pound mark. So first up in this batch is a business that ensures that waste becomes a valuable commodity. Did you know that more than 60% of the world's waste ends its life in landfill or waste dump? And to try and combat that, our next winner has developed Waste Map which is an analytics platform to make waste systems more visible and highlight the value in waste materials. Huge congratulations goes to Michael Groves, Jane Stewart and the team at Topolytics who've won a Scottish Edge Award of £45,000. Next up, we have the UK's first exclusively gluten-free and vegan brewery who are on a mission to make great tasting craft beer that everyone can enjoy, regardless of allergies or diet. Edinburgh-based Belfield Brewery were only eligible for a loan from Scottish Edge and were assessed via a separate assessment pathway in our competition. But I'd still like to say a massive well done. I'm delighted to award Belfield Brewery with an Edge 16 award of £70,000. Heart disease is common in dogs and cats, sadly, with estimates saying that around 10 to 15% of cats and dogs are affected by cardiac disease. Our next winner has developed a completely unique and cost-effective diagnostic testing process that identifies heart disease in companion animals using blood samples. It's truly groundbreaking technology. So huge congratulations goes to Eve Hanks of my RNA, who's been provided with a Scottish Edge Award of £45,000. Well done. Finding the right driving instructors can be a real challenge for learner drivers, and that was until GoRoady came along. GoRoady is a marketplace to connect learner drivers to instructors and is already operating across Dundee, Glasgow, Nottingham, Aberdeen and Leeds, with over 500 instructors already signed up. Please give a huge virtual round of applause to Michael and Barry of GoRoady, who've won an Edge 16 award of £40,000. Well done. Now let's see the moment they all heard that they had won. Um, 
I'm delighted to let you know that the panel were hugely impressed by the information you presented, by your pitch on the day, by how you handled the Q&A and, and by your business. And I'm delighted to say that you are a Scottish Edge Round 16 winner. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic news, everyone. Finally, finally got it. Brilliant. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very, very difficult competition and we've had lots of great businesses. However, you did impress our assessors. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to announce that Scottish Edge Assessors would like to award you uh, an award for round 16. Congratulations. Oh, that's absolutely Lovely. fantastic news. Thank you. <laughs> that's excellent. Brilliant stuff. Well done. Well done. You obviously gave a very good account of yourself because I'm delighted to tell you that the um, assessment panel have uh, selected you to receive a Scottish Edge Award. That's brilliant news. That's brilliant news. Oh, absolutely. thank goodness for that. So, oh, that's absolutely excellent news. That's um... okay. Well, the reason that I asked you onto the call was to let you know that yes, it was an absolutely fantastic, high quality final, but the judges have decided that Go Roadie should be one of our round 16 Scottish Edge winners. Seriously? Congratulations, you've won. Oh, that's insane. Are you serious? That's amazing. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Like, uh, honestly, like, oh, thank you so much. Honestly, I've just like, been nerv nervous for the last like two days solid, so. I think you can see how much the team enjoy making those calls. So we also have a couple of special category awards to announce. Firstly, we have a late addition to the Scottish Edge suite of awards. We've been working very closely with the Industrial Biotechnology Innovation Centre over the last few years, and we're delighted to announce a new IBIOIC Industrial Biotechnology Edge Award for Round 16. In collaboration with IBIOIC, this award goes to the top biotech company in the competition, and here's some detail about the winner of this award. This winner offers customers in the microbiology sector affordable and innovative solutions for automation and analysis of microbial culturing through the development of a series of retrofitable devices. Huge congratulations goes to Alex McVeigh and the team at Oji Bio, who wins an award of £45,000 and the easy to say title of IBIOIC Industrial Biotechnology Edge winner round 2016. <laughs> Sorry, round 16. Well done, Alex. Uh, first of all, can you say the title of the award? I buy AC. <laughs> the rest has the lost on me, I'm afraid. Right, OK. So how do you feel about securing your funding tonight? It's, it's brilliant news. It's going to make a big difference to the team and to, to how we break the business. So thank you very much. That's fantastic. Well, well done, Alex. We're absolutely delighted to support you. So huge congratulations to Alex and the Oji Bio team and a huge thank you to IB, IBIOIC for adding another exciting category to Edge 16. So it's now time for the final award of the night. And what a great way to end by awarding a business that was described at the final by the judges as just wow. Their cutting edge electronic skin for robot avatars called eDermis has applications in outer space and hazardous environments. Please give a massive virtual round of applause to Zaki Hussain of Touch Lab, who secured the title of Higgs Edge winner for round 16 and a funding <laughs> award of £100,000. Congratulations, Zaki. How does it feel to be the Higgs Edge winner for round 16? Oh, this is, uh, yeah, amazing. Thanks, thank you so much to Better uh, Edge and the support of our team and partners. I think this validates our electronic skin and the other parts of the we to use, and it will open up uh, the next chapter for the Touch Lab and robots. So can you just tell us a bit about robot avatars in space, but in a language that we, we can all understand? <laughs> of course, yeah. So uh, just specifically to space, at the moment, it costs about one to 10 million pounds approximately to transport an astronaut into space. And it's very dangerous because, you know, keeping humans alive in sub temperatures, feeding them in outer space and everything is very difficult. 
So if we could have a technology which allowed a human to just teleport into a robot interface that already exists, and the, we, we don't actually have to be transported up there, you could achieve a lot more than what we do today. So asteroid mining, space colonization, or uh, et cetera. <laughs> Well, I think you can see why the judges were wowed by that proposal. So congratulations, Saki. I'm absolutely delighted for you. So I'm just going to hand over to Stephen now. Thanks, Evelyn, and well done, Zaki. And what a brilliant way to round off such an incredible round of Scottish Edge. And I can just confirm the total amount awarded tonight has been 1.08 million, which is just truly brilliant. I started off this evening by talking about the themes of hope and inspiration. And I think we've achieved that throughout tonight in Bucketfuls. We wanted to showcase the future, and there's no doubt we've seen some amazing businesses be supported this evening who have exciting futures ahead of them. And lastly, we spoke about pride. And I speak on behalf of EDGE team, our board and our partners, to say that we're extremely proud to be playing a small part in helping tonight's 33 winners take the next step in their quest to become a success story for Scotland. Before I hand back to Evelyn, just for some final thank yous, I'd just like to finish off and, and myself and, and cover off a couple of key highlights from round 16. First of all, Alison Rose mentioned in her speech that we had 60% of our applicants have a female playing a key role in the business leadership. However, if we take that into our overall winners tonight, 25 of the 33 winners have females in key leadership roles, which is 76% of the winners, which is just brilliant. Also, for the very first time, we've had more female assessors involved in the Scottish Edge process than we have male. And in fact, one of our judging days at the final, we had a, a, a makeup of a panel which had four females and one male, which is again is a first for the competition. We've seen four circular economy edge business, or businesses focused uh, on that uh, process be supported tonight, with a large number of winners having shown strong social purposes. Uh, and having really core social elements at the, the heart of their business. It was also a great pleasure to, ha to hand out the very first STV Growth Edge Award, and I'm, I'm sure Sam's thinking about what ideas he can have for his advert when that goes live. And all of this that we've achieved uh, throughout the whole of Scottish Edge Round 16 has been done purely through a fully digital format, which again has been something that we've, we've never uh, managed to do before. So Evelyn, just over to you now to finish off the evening. Thanks, Stephen, and I totally agree. Round 16 has been amazing for all the right reasons. As always, with a small team at Scottish Edge, we can only make events like tonight's possible through a huge amount of support. So my first thanks of the night goes to the amazing team here at Metro Production Group, who've enabled us to bring this event live to you from their studio and provided all the technical expertise to enable us to share the event with a live audience and also hear firsthand from some of our winning businesses. They also brought our live pitching finals to a virtual audience, which showcased the up and coming entrepreneurial talent in Scotland to over 2,000 people. So a huge thank you to Maya, Ali and all the team at Metro Production Group. We've loved working with you. On the theme of our two-day pitching finals, I must mention the outstanding job done by Matthew Quinn to keep everyone entertained and on track throughout the day. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, your humour and energy is just inspiring. And after hosting the event tonight, I have even more respect for the brilliant job you did keeping things going for two days while only staring into a camera. I'd also like to highlight the, the great work done by Dangerous Studios in supporting Matthew on the finals days. Next up is our judges. We used 36 judges in this round who gave up their time to offer their expertise and knowledge to help us identify the 33 winners we've celebrated here tonight. And we say a huge thank you to all of you. We would like, however, just to highlight Simon Hanna, who has now chaired our judging panel at the final five times in a row and brings an outstanding efficiency and leadership to the final process. We'd also like to say a massive thank you to Margaret Gibson, OBE, who has now brought her business experience and knowledge to 15 of the 16 Scottish Edge rounds. So, Margaret, we can't thank you enough for your exceptional support. We've got some amazing partner organisations that support us in the competition too, and we'd like to say a massive thank you to all our Scottish Edge partners. 
We've also been able to offer some amazing special category prizes tonight, thanks to backing from Zero Way Scotland, Postcode Innovation Trust, STV and IBIOIC. Being able to stand here tonight and hand out over a million pounds in prize funding is, funding is obviously an incredible experience and an incredible feeling. And it's only achievable through having some wonderful partners and funders with a special mention to the Royal Bank of Scotland, the Hunter Foundation, the Scottish Government and Scottish Enterprise. Your support has given hope to 33 brilliant businesses tonight and we at Scottish Edge are extremely proud to call you our key partners. We've also had some fantastically inspirational talks tonight. Thanks go to Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop, MSP, Debbie Wake, Alison Rose, Victoria Carmichael, Poonam Gupta, OBE, and Sir Tom, along with Professor Sir Christopher Evans. Your contribution and kind words has made tonight's event even more special. I'd also like to quickly thank all of our winners tonight and all of the Round 16 applicants, who despite all that's going on in the world, have displayed a determination to succeed and to make a positive difference to Scotland. And I take my hat off to you for that. So finally, to the amazing Scottish Edge team, I hope you can see them all on screen. Um, you're all just incredible. Um, and I think I would like to just highlight, it. this is a small team, so we do all of this with a very small team. Over the past few months, Ken, um, our Chief Learning Officer, and Kevin and David, our Relationship Managers, have been like the three musketeers, always ready to bound into action to support our EDGE alumni, offering advice and guidance, and often just being there on the phone when an entrepreneur has had a really particularly tough time. So all three of you have been amazing and your experience is invaluable to the full Scottish Edge offering. Should say as well that Stephen suggested maybe that I went with the three Stooges, because obviously we have a lot of laughs as well. Richard, you've been like John Nash from the movie, A Beautiful Mind, a total numbers genius. Uh, Richard has looked after every penny of Scottish Edge funding, but also ensured our past winners have had the flexibility in the repayment proposals if they've needed them. And your ability to get our end of year cash flow close to the one we predicted in January despite a global pandemic is actually nothing short of astounding. Then we have Jack. We all know our Jack loves Back to the Future and in this round he's had all the cheeky charm and humour of Marty McFly and the creative genius of Dr Emmett Brown. So Jack, the way you capture content, piece it together and turn it into something amazing and funny and engaging always leaves us baffled and, you know, just amazed. And finally, there's our used to be nice guy, Stephen. So Stephen wrote this part um, and he's described himself as like the Fonz from Happy Days. A bit cool. Um, but actually, we're thinking he's more like Tony Stark from Iron Man. He's never more than a few feet from a well-dressed suit, a well-pressed suit. And he's great at bringing the team together um, and marshalling our support to deliver every aspect of the Scottish Edge competition. Um, he always keeps everything very nice and calm and uh, makes sure that all of our winners get a fantastic service and experience of Scottish Edge. So thanks, Stephen. Pleasure. It's a pleasure working with you, you and it's a pleasure working with the Scottish Edge team. I personally feel incredibly lucky to be working with one of the best, most hardworking teams in Scotland. So that wraps up a truly awesome night. And like me, I'm sure you're all bursting with pride at being part of Scottish Edge Round 16. That just leaves us to say thank you all for tuning in tonight. We hope you enjoyed the show. And from all of us here at the One Million Show... It's good night from me. And it's good night from him. <laughs>